highest, but right here in Southwest Georgia, how many of you believe we got a special place? It's a special place. And we welcome you for wherever you are, wherever you're watching today. And uh, as you're vacationing this summer, stay connected to the house uh, and uh, make sure that you're here uh, in person or online. Acts chapter 1. I want to give you a little context real quickly before I read this scripture. Um, Jesus stayed on the earth after his resurrection for 40 days, okay? Um, And so for 40 days, Jesus walked around on the earth. He encountered the disciples and the apostles, what would become the apostles of the early church, uh, several times during his remaining uh, tenure on the earth before he went uh, to seat at the right hand of the Father. And so Jesus appears, we see him in the first chapter of the book of Acts. So a lot of people don't realize that we go through the Gospels, which is where the life of Christ, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those are the accounts of the, the, the apostles um, that looked at the life of Christ. But if you go and flip over into the book of Acts, you see that's where Jesus actually says, hey, I'm going to come back, but I'm out of here for now, okay? And so that happens in Acts chapter 1, but he gives some significant instruction there. And so I want to make sure that uh, that we understand the context of what we're talking about because we want to grow. Anybody want to grow in the Lord, grow in your knowledge? Uh, amen, I do too. So Acts 1 verses 4 and 5, Jesus comes in and he sits down one last time. He's 40, this is like 40 days, like day number 40 because if you read the rest of that chapter, that's when the Bible says that Jesus went up, man, he was out. Um, and so just before that, the Bible says on one occasion while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. Everybody say that real quickly, but wait, okay? For the gift my Father promised. Now, this is Jesus talking, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Water baptism is a beautiful thing. But the last thing Jesus said should be noted by believers. You shall be baptized by the Holy Spirit. Everybody just got quiet. Because our theology is a little mixed up on this. But I can show you in Scripture where the Bible says you can't even call on the name or name the name of Jesus as unto salvation without the power of the Holy Spirit. So when you become resurrected in Christ and you give your life to Christ, the resurrection power of the Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside of you, if you will. It fills you with the Holy Spirit, right? But then there are gifts that operate through the power of the Holy Spirit that are designed to lead us and guide us in our life, which then in turn will produce the fruit of the Holy Spirit in our life, right? Okay, so let's understand that that Jesus emphasized before he went to heaven you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit basically what he was saying is if I'm not gonna be here to walk around with you and hold your hand you better have the Holy Spirit with you right that's what he's saying he's like hey I need you to get it so let's go now and watch and they they were obedient they did what he said in Acts. so let's go to Acts chapter 2 verses 1 and 2 and then we're gonna talk for a moment when the day of Pentecost came they were all together in one place so this would have been 10 days later after Jesus gave them the instruction 40th day he's out of here he tells them go wait don't leave you're gonna be baptized with the Holy Spirit and uh, Like they knew what that was going to be, right? So we're going to talk about that in just a second. And he says to them, uh, go and wait. And says, when the day of Pentecost came, that would have been 10 days later, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Lord, help us to hear what you want to say today about the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody give the Lord a clap and a shout if you're thankful for his word. That's so cool. The New Testament apostles were amazing. They were just ordinary people like us, okay? They were just like us. They were fishermen. They were doctors. They were, I mean, they were supernaturally empowered though, right? 
They were supernaturally empowered by the Holy Spirit. They did so many things right. I'm confident, knowing humanity, that they did a lot of things wrong in the process, right? Because you're dealing with, uh, you remember after the resurrection, Thomas, he didn't believe, man. He's like, Jesus, where are you? you know, I don't believe that. You show me your scars, you know? I mean, he, he don't even believe. And then you've got Peter who can't stop putting his sword away. And he's cutting people's ears off in the garden and he's running away before, uh, you know, when Jesus dies on the cross, he's like, oh, I don't even know who that was. You know, he's like, dude, you just spent three years with him. Don't lie. You know who he was. And so they're falling apart. He's got a bad temper. And if so things are just, things are just like seemingly unraveling uh, for some of the apostles. But of all the amazing things that they did, in spite of all of that, I'm amazed by something very significant. And I want to talk about it today. Uh, with Jesus gone, keep in mind, everything that they had put their faith in uh, had just gone and ascended to heaven. And they're like, yo, what's going on? Their hopes were completely probably depleted. And they were in a place where they had to make a decision. Will we take his final instructions right? Will we go to the upper room and will we have the audacious courage to wait on whatever it is that he said is coming? Can you imagine what that 10 days must have been like? Let's just be real. Let's talk about real life. Can you imagine everything you had invested the last three years of your life in? This is the Messiah. We've learned about him our entire life. He's here with us. We've seen it happen. The prophecies have unfolded. We saw him crucified. He was resurrected from the dead. He's been back and he's visited with us and he's talked to us about the kingdom that's coming. And he's told us, hey, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to come again. But until I do, I'm going to send a comforter. And here's the deal. I'm getting ready to go right now, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to go to Jerusalem and I want you to not leave there until you get the power that I'm talking talking about you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit can you imagine what that was like going like them going down sitting down hey boys we just sit down in the upper room I guess they started having some lamb because it was going to be uh, the feast days were there and they were going to celebrate Shavuot so a lot of people don't know that Pentecost just so you know it didn't start in the upper room in Acts chapter 2 verse 1 right there when the when the wind came into the room it actually started all the way back at Mount Sinai when Moses received the Ten Commandments right okay so Every year, the Hebrew nation, 50 days after the Passover, have celebrated what we call Pentecost, the giving of the Holy Spirit, um, the thing that Jesus talked about last before he went to heaven. If you think um, uh, it's probably wise, uh, I do personally, that we pay attention to the last thing Jesus talked about. Okay, I'm going to say that one more time. Do you think it is wise that we pay attention to the last thing that Jesus talked about, right? Right? Okay, right. Okay, good class. Uh, good job. Okay, so, so here's what some of them probably thought. It, can you imagine them waiting around like on day one? Well, I wonder like when's it going to happen? Like what, what's coming? Maybe they're just sitting there. I bet you some of them probably thought he was going to come back. Right? Jesus is going to come back. That's what he's going to do. He's going to go to heaven, and then he talked about coming back again. He's just going to come back, and then he'll tell us what to do. And then they're just sitting around, and I guess they decide, let's just wait right here. Day one, day two, some of us have waited years to see God do something in our lives. But honestly, that's the level of trust that I'm trying to develop in my personal walk. And that is this. When you don't know what to do next, just do what Jesus says. Just obey the Lord. Just learn how to go and wait. Because I can tell you, if you learn how to wait, you'll encounter the wind at some point. I love that song that our worship team sings. Uh, I've built my life on Jesus. He's never let me down. I want you to know something. If you'll build your life on Jesus, he won't let you down. And he may at times ask you to go and be patient and wait. And here's where it comes in where the New Testament apostles were really impressive to me is that they had to at some point, I was going to say pull up their jeans, but they probably had to strap their sandals, okay? Uh, and they had to, here's what they had to do. They had to start believing, they had to know, check it out, this is where I want to go today. They had to know that there was more. 
They had to know that it was not over. And if Jesus said something greater is coming that's going to empower me in my life, I have to believe what Jesus said. So let me encourage somebody today as I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to navigate into this message for a few more moments, probably about 20 more minutes, about waiting on the wind. Let me encourage someone. There is more. It's not over. The power of the Holy Spirit is active and available to us here today. And if you will allow the wind of God to move in your life, I'm telling you that Jesus is here and he wants to encounter you. Because sometimes you got to learn how to hold on. And see, that's what the apostles did. They stuck together until God moved. And uh, I'm telling you that there's something powerful about being in the right place at the right time with the right people. You see, I can feel the resistance of the enemy not wanting me to teach about the Holy Spirit this morning. I can feel it pushing back because what the enemy doesn't want you to do, he doesn't want you to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. He does not want you to have the wisdom of God that passes all understanding. He does not want you to have the knowledge of God. He does not want you to have the gift of discernment. He certainly does not want you to have the gift of prophecy whereby which you could open up and tell the devil exactly where he can go and that's straight back to hell. Come on, somebody. He does not want you to operate to have the gift of tongues. He doesn't want you to have the gift of interpretation of spirit. I'm telling you you right now he does not want you to operate in the power of the Holy Spirit why if he can do that he can just keep you right where you are he can keep you right where you are but if you need God to move you're in the right place with the right people at the right time this morning come on somebody what are we really doing we gather here every week just to wait we gather to wait on the Lord Here's what I want to do. I want to talk about three fast things this morning that the wind of God will do in your life. Number one, fast. The wind removes. It removes. Have you ever seen a storm come through? I've got a lot of trees in my house, and when the wind blows through there, it just blows all the old limbs off, and they're out there for me to go pick up. Come on, is anybody having to deal with that right now? Yeah, it's terrible, right? Blows everything everywhere. But there's something we need to learn from that, and that is this. In a moment in the upper room, God changed everything. And then what happened is that the wind of God blew through there and he said, everything you've known to this point, I want you to know, I am now putting it on the inside of you. Everything you will ever need moving forward, I'm putting it on the inside of you because the wind of the Holy Spirit is transformative, guys. I've been talking about this idea called radical transformation, transforming the way I think, transforming the way I walk, transforming the way I talk, transforming to become radically transformed transformed and made alive in Christ. What is that? There's only one way to that, and that is the wind of the Holy Spirit, okay? Because we need the wind like never before. You may not realize it, but there's stuff in your life, in my life, in all of our lives that needs to be removed. But I'm going to give you a little secret. If you want God to move, you got to be willing to remove, okay? Because here's the deal. We're living in challenging days, We're living in challenging days. We're living in times where people want to attach belief systems to you. And you got to make sure that you remove anything that's dead so that God can produce life. The wind of God will come and blow in our lives and it will remove what doesn't belong. You see, the apostles had to make a decision and that is this. I'm going to the upper room and I'm going to wait for whatever it is that God is sending. I'm willing to wait. And I'm wondering in this room, actually, as we're navigating in our walk with Christ, in our walk with God. I have been feeling this hunger inside of me, and I don't know if anybody else is feeling it, but I'm feeling this hunger inside of me where I'm expecting God to move. I'm talking about I'm expecting God to move. You say, Pastor Trent, what are you talking about? I'm talking about I'm expecting a nation to come into revival and repent. I'm expecting a city to come alive. I'm expecting lost people to be found and come home. I'm expecting a move of God to move through our families and through our children and through our grandchildren that will put something in our soul that absolutely nothing will remove. I'm talking about a move of God. Young people say stuff like this. They say, well, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. They got me some new white shoes. Y'all like my shoes? My kids told me I was fly today. 
Here's the deal. Are you here for it today or are you here for it every day? Because we got to allow the wind of God to remove what doesn't belong in our lives. And a lot of times we want, uh, we want a breeze. We don't want the wind. Oh, Lord, have mercy. The enemy will try to talk you out of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. But the wind removes what is dead. And it also removes doubt right along with it. I want you to know that the Holy Spirit gives us all an opportunity to have a personal Pentecost, what I call a personal Pentecost. And that is God, now, here I am. Let the wind of God blow in my life. Let the Holy Spirit be active in my life. Let the pattern of the world that is pulling against me be cast down and let my mind, this mind which is in Christ, be renewed and let the wind of the Holy Spirit provide momentum for me, removing what doesn't belong and empowering me to move into my destiny. Come on, give the Lord a clap and a shout if that's you. Say, God, let your wind remove whatever you want to remove. Number two, the wind refreshes. I want you to hear that. The wind refreshes. I'm going to move quickly because we got to go fast. Have you ever been uh, to, like, call it Disney World, Wild Adventures, Universal Theme Park, in the middle of the summer with your children standing in a hot line, riding a roller coaster two hours long, and you stand in there, and it's like 98 degrees, 75% humidity, and you're just like. And your kids are going, hey, Dad, hey, Dad, it's going to be awesome. And you're going, God, how did I, why, <laughs> why, bad decision, worst decision of life, right? And you're like sweltering. And you're just believing, man, is there anything could refresh me? And, and see, they're so smart at the theme parks. Because about um, 50 to 100 feet apart, they put these fans with the little misters on them. And so like uh, you're standing there in line and you're just looking at the fan. I'm like, babe, we're almost to the fan. You come by that fan and you just, shoo, it's like, oh. All of a sudden, you're refreshed, right? The wind and the water, the cooling. That's what the Holy Spirit will do in your life. The Holy Spirit, the wind of the Holy Spirit will refresh you. Not only will it remove what doesn't belong, but it will refresh you in your life. you got to let the wind blow through your life. I want to teach you a little bit of Hebrew this morning. Are you guys ready for class? The Hebrew word for uh, wind is actually called ruach. Ah, you see that? <laughs> ruach. Everybody say that with me. Say ruach. ruach. Oh, y'all are good. You're doing well. What does that mean? It means wind or breath or spirit, okay? That's what that means. Now listen, I'm, I'm going to take you a step further. This is the advanced class. The ruach hakadesh is the Holy Spirit. Come on now. The ruach hakadesh. Did you know that that is the same word that was used in Ezekiel chapter uh, 37? Do you remember Ezekiel when he went down into the valley of dry bones and everything was dead and he called on the wind of God to come and cause dead things to come to life? I'm telling you that's the same Ruach HaKadosh that came up into the upper room. Come on, somebody. It is the same Ruach HaKadosh that will come into your life, that will baptize you, fill you with the Holy Spirit, give you the wisdom of God to raise your children, give you the knowledge of God that you don't have on a book but that only can come from the Father above. I'm talking about the discernment of knowing when to move, when to talk, who to get in relationship with, what to buy, what job to take. I'm talking about the Ruach HaKadosh that will lead you in your life. What is it? It is the wind of the Holy Spirit. That's what it is. And we have to be willing to allow the wind to remove, but I'm telling you we also have to allow the wind to refresh us because the Holy Spirit brings life. In Hebrew understanding, when they would say ruach, if you say that, it actually engages your lungs in your breath. They actually believed, the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, they believed when they said ruach hakadesh, that the Holy Spirit was actually going to be present in every breath that they said, in every moment that they lived. I'm telling you, the ruach hakadesh, the Spirit of God, and believe it or not, is the same Spirit and the same word that we found in Genesis 1-2. 
And the earth was formless and desolate. Emptiness and darkness was over the surface of the deep. Pause. I didn't catch this in the first service, but the Lord just stopped me. Some people in your life are looking at something that's formless, desolate. Maybe you feel empty, or maybe you feel like you're in a dark place. The Ruach HaKadosh hovers over dark places and brings them to life. That's what he does. And if you look at the scripture, that's where it says, and the, the spirit or the Ruach, the wind of God, was hovering over the surface of the waters. The Ruach, HaKadosh, brings order to chaos, guys. That's what he did in Genesis 1. That's what he did in the upper room. That's what he'll do today at 1501 Schley Avenue. That's what he'll do for you that are watching on HCU Live, wherever you are. I'm telling you, nothing, check it out, is more exhausting than disorder. And you've got to allow the Holy Spirit to come in and refresh your life. You've got to let him come in and remove things out of your life. So that what? So that things that are out of order come into order. There's a reason sometimes when you feel drained. Mm, I'm going to do a little teaching for a moment. There's a reason you, can f- you feel drained in life. Sometimes you think it's just the people around you or your job or you're just tired or whatever it is. I will say this. I believe sometimes we're drained because we are trying to carry everything that the Ruach HaKadosh is designed to cause, uh, to, the wind of God is designed to come through our life and carry us and we're trying to carry everything on our own. Because we don't allow the Holy Spirit to do what? To blow into our life, remove what needs to be removed, bring us into a place where he can refresh us and bring chaos into order. Nothing makes Keisha happier than things being in order. Any husbands out there that feel my pain? Yeah, if Keisha comes in and things are out of order, she uh, she just looks at us and we're all like, he did it. Can I just encourage you today? The Ruach HaKadosh. I'm going to keep saying that until it gets you. Some of y'all are going to be driving home like, Ruach HaKadosh. <laughs> You're going to walk into your office Sunday. Hey, Ruach HaKadosh came to our church Sunday. It's the Holy Spirit. Some of y'all thought I was speaking in tongues when I first said that. It's the wind of the Spirit, guys. It's here to refresh you. It's here to refresh you today. It's here to refresh you every day. Here's what we're challenged with because we want to be refreshed but what I'm noticing in this world that we're living in as a pastor is that people will open their soul to anything listen to me I'm going to teach you for just a moment and I'm going to give you the last key the wind will do we open our souls to people we open our souls to music to philosophy we open our souls I'm, okay, I'm going to sound old-fashioned, but I don't care. You open your soul to some movies that you don't need to watch. I'm telling you, if you've got any kind of hard, demonic something playing in your house, you need to cast the devil out of your house because that is not God's will for a believer to subject their children or your mind or your soul to watching a bunch of killing and a bunch of demons coming out of hell and coming after people. You call me old-fashioned if you want to, but I'll preach the gospel and I'll stand right here and I'll stay right here and I won't move and I will not waver because I'm telling you the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit of God is the spirit of Almighty God and he is offended when we act like we don't care that he's around. Take that to your Netflix account. God didn't design you to watch a bunch of demons fly around on a screen and get scared at night and your children have night terrors in your house because you've let an evil spirit up in your house. And nobody want to talk back to me today, but I'll preach anyway. It is not God's will. It is God's will for the wind of the Ruach HaKadosh to be in your home, not for the evil, d- detestable things that the world wants to throw down your, uh, you know, write down your, the, the, the internet pipeline to your home. Don't open your soul to anything. Here's my deal. Here's my advice. Open your soul to the power of the Holy Spirit. 
That's my advice. Come on, if you're going to do that, give the Lord a clap and a shout. Isn't that awesome? Last thing, the wind produces power. Team, you can come help me close. Wind produces power. The power of the Holy Spirit, the wind of the Holy Spirit, learning how to wait on the wind. So what are we talking about? The wind removes things. It removes what doesn't need to be there. The wind refreshes us. We've got to allow the Holy Spirit, the wind of the Holy Spirit to refresh us. But part of this is waiting, learning how to wait. Wait on the Lord. Are we willing to wait on him? That's the question. Because we wait on everything. I can't stand waiting. Everybody that knows me knows I can't stand to wait. Like um, our building that we're working on right now, we're about to press the gas at the end of this month, by the way. You're going to start seeing some major things start happening. This week they're putting ceiling tiles in our kids' uh, uh, building, uh, kids' wing and classrooms. They've all been painted. It's so awesome. Come on, somebody just real quickly give the Lord praise for that. It's going to be the most beautiful thing. I'm telling you, God is working to work. Thank you for your faithfulness to that, by the way. We build hope, man. Keep giving strong every week. Our consistency will compound. But what I'm saying is this, if, if we're willing to wait, I can't stand waiting. That has been a test of my patience because I already see us there. I already see us reaching people. I already see us using that place for outreach. I already see kids running around in the gymnasium and I'm having to wait. But the question is, are we willing to wait? Here's the deal. When you see Jesus telling the, uh, the disciples and the apostles that we talked about at the beginning of this message, when you see him telling them, hey, I want you to go wait for me in Jerusalem and don't leave until you get... The, the fullness of the Holy Spirit. You know what he was saying? He was saying the Hebrew word. I'm, here's Hebrew word number two today. You ready for it? It's called kava. Kava. And here's what, it's, here's what it means. It's so cool. The word wait in Hebrew, kava, it means to wait actively with anticipation, watching for God to act. So what Jesus was really saying is this. What Jesus was saying is, go to Jerusalem, go to the upper room, and here's the deal. I know you've been walking with me for three years, but I need you to know something. When I leave out of here, you're going to need something more. You're going to need power that is from God Almighty. It's the power that has caused me to be able to walk. It is the power that has caused me to be able to move in ministry and teach you and train you. It is the power that will get you through college. Come on, young people. It is the power that will hold you, mothers and fathers and grandparents, through your marriage. It is the power of the Holy Spirit. And, and what Jesus was saying is what I want you to do, guys, you're going to have to have it because I'm going to be gone. And he said, go to Jerusalem and wait actively with anticipation, watching for God to act. I want to encourage somebody today that came to church that's waiting on the wind of God somewhere in your life. And you're saying, God, I'm willing for you to remove whatever needs to be removed. I want you to refresh me in my life. I don't want to live a stale Christian life. I want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit, by the Ruach Kadesh. Uh, and you're saying that. And here's the deal. But you're waiting right now and you're expecting and you're hoping and you want to see God start moving. I'm telling you right now, go ahead and sit up on the edge of your seat and start waiting actively with anticipation, expecting for God to act. Go ahead and let the kava come alive in your life. Because the longer I live, as much as I don't like waiting, I value waiting. Oh, mercy. Because here's what waiting will do. Waiting will keep you in a place in your life where you say, I'm not moving until the Lord shows up. Come on now. I'm not making that decision until God says what to do. I'm not speaking until I have the words to speak. I'm not moving until I have the words to speak. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is the empower of your words. I'm not going to act on that sinful nature. I'm going to let the wind of God blow into my life. And I'm going to let him empower me. I'm going to let my life, the posture of my life, be waiting on the Holy Spirit. I brought something with me today that belongs to my dad. And when I was a little boy, my dad used to collect eagles. And Danelle's going to grab me that eagle real quickly. Thank you so much. When I was a little boy, my father had a bunch of these. He's actually here today. If you're watching on HCU Live, my mom and dad came to visit. Yeah, isn't that awesome? That's them right there. Y'all make them feel welcome. Isn't that cool? Um, and he, had, he has a bunch of these. I called him and I said, hey, since you're coming to town, uh, would you bring me, bring me that big eagle that you have that's got the wings up? And uh, 
Y'all pray I don't drop it right now because he would be mad at me. He's had this eagle since I was a little boy. He's got several of them. And they're up on this bookshelf. And it, if you don't know our story, when I was a young kid, my mom who has a disability, it's called spinocerebellar degeneration for all the people in the house that would know what that is. It's kind of a degenerative part of the brain that, that, uh, that works with uh, motor skills and equilibrium and things of that nature. It's a neurological disorder. And, but when I was a little boy and I was born, my mom was up walking around like everybody else. You can see her in her fancy Corvette power chair down here today. You got a hot rod over there, Grandy. But uh, when I was a little boy, she was up just like you and I. But over time, there was a deterioration that started taking place in her life. And um, my father, in addition, and mother, in addition to them managing that disorder, they raised us as boys, my, my, myself and my older brother. And uh, I'll just brag on them real quickly. Um, I don't remember ever, everybody say with me, ever, ever missing church for anything besides vacation. And moms and dads, you need to go ahead and let that sink in. And it wasn't as easy as just going out and jumping in the car. It was getting the wheelchair. By the time I was five years old, we were helping her walk into church, and she was stumbling and about to fall. I can't find nobody in here today, but I'm going to preach to you for just one second. I'm going to talk to you about real life, what it really is to wait on the Lord in here. That's what I'm going to talk to you about briefly. Because the wind of God will empower you if you will let it. I don't remember one time ever them making an excuse. We're just too tired. It's too hard. Because it didn't get easier, it got harder. It got harder to get in the car. It got harder. Then we got a scooter, and then we got a lift, and then we got other things, and we started doing that. And I'll never forget. I didn't think about it until I started writing this sermon this week about waiting on the wind. And it hit me sometime Friday. Call dad and tell him to bring one of those eagles. Somebody's crying out to the Lord up there. Look at that. Sweet baby. That's a sign of a growing church. Y'all give a clap and a shout for all the babies in the house. Proud of you. Proud of you for bringing that baby to church. You know, we got these, these eagles. So he brought this eagle, man. And it reminded me of all their faithfulness. And the Lord spoke to me so clearly Because someone during our life had gotten a calligraphy pen and also had given a gift to my dad. And that was this. It was his favorite scripture, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And right up on top of the bookshelf by all the eagles was that framed scripture. And I don't know if you know it or not, Pop, because you may have thought that you just liked eagles, but I'm going to tell you what it really was. What it really was, it was the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKadosh, reminding you that in all of the trials that you were walking through, that every time you walked in that room, in that office, and looked up and saw those eagles, and saw the Word of God in Isaiah 40, 31, that says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. When you thought you were running out, I'm telling you, God was filling you up. When you thought you didn't have enough left, God was empowering you. He was causing you to mount up with wings on eagles. Why? Because you were willing to wait on the Lord. I want to encourage someone today. If you will wait on the Lord, God will give you strength. The Holy Spirit will empower you like nothing else. The Holy Spirit is the best counselor you will ever run into, my friend. The Holy Spirit is the greatest source of power and strength and forward momentum. Do you want to move forward in life? Let me tell you how. How to move forward, it just is the same as the apostles. How you move forward is the power of the Holy Spirit. Spent three years with Jesus on this earth, and they still needed the Holy Spirit to move forward. 
How many of you believe that we need the Holy Spirit to move forward in our lives? Somebody give the Lord a clap and a shout. Come on, if you believe that. Come on, can you thank the Lord for the power of the Holy Spirit here today? Thank you, Jesus. Somebody here today may feel part of that story I just said. You might feel like like you need some help. You know, it's in the early service. I looked looked at everybody and I said, you know what? Here's my advice today. Spread your wings. Let the Holy Spirit move you into what you want to be moved into and where you need to go. I love Pentecost Sunday. As a little boy, I was, I was, a, I was raised in a Pentecost church. We got every, everybody in this church, everybody from pew-running Pentecostals to Lutherans to Catholics to Baptists. Got a lot of Baptist folk in there. A lot of people have never been in church in their whole life in this room. We're all the body of Christ, and everybody has a different position and understanding. But I want to tell you, the Holy Spirit is what you are filled with. I don't know, I don't know what you think you're filled with. I promise you it's not the devil. Well, some of y'all. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, we filled with the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit, guys? There are gifts that come with the Holy Spirit to empower you. Learning how to wait on the Holy Spirit. Let the wind of the Holy Spirit empower your life. The gift of wisdom, knowledge, discernment, healing, miracles, tongues, interpretation. Somebody say, tongues? Oh, yeah, yeah, re- exactly. You believe Jesus died on a cross, was resurrected on the third day, sits at the right hand of the Father, ever making intercession, and you don't believe the gift of tongues is real? You need to go read your Bible. Come on, give the Lord a clap on that. Some of y'all are... I don't know about that. But you need to know. You need to know that the Holy Spirit wants to blow in your life. The Ruach HaKadosh. It's what he wants to do. He wants to empower you by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want all of the gifts of the Holy Spirit to be active in our church. I want us to be a healthy congregation. But I'll be honest with you. I'm uninterested in all the gifts of the Holy Spirit and no fruit of the Holy Spirit. Well, it got quiet right there, didn't it? Mm Mm-hmm. I've met people in my life that spoke in tongues more than anybody. That's what Paul said. He said, I, I pray that I speak in tongues more than any of you, but they, they can't speak in English worth anything. Always casting people down, arguing with folks, gossiping. Come on, I can't find nobody in here. That's not the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Holy Spirit bring life. The wind of the Holy Spirit brings life. God wants to bring it to you today. If you're ready to let the wind carry you, give the Lord a clap and a shout. Isn't that awesome? I love y'all so much. Real quickly, every head bowed and every eye closed. You came in here today, you say, Pastor Trent, I wouldn't embarrass you for anything in the world. You say, Pastor Trent, I want to give my life to Jesus today. Either I had a relationship with God and I've kind of walked away from it. I want to rededicate my life to Christ. I want to, I want to put some things behind me and I want to say yes today. So far this year, 152 people in this church have said yes to Jesus Christ. Or maybe the second thing is this. You say, I've never made a public profession of my faith in Christ. And I want to give my life to Jesus today. I'm not trying to ask you to join a church. I'm trying to tell you that the kingdom of God is before you, that eternity is more important than what you're dealing with right now. It's more important than that addiction. It's more important than that illicit uh, place that you've been in your life or that the sin that you feel like is, is dragging you down. A, a yes to Jesus is a yes to eternal life. One, two, three, lift your hand and say, I want to say yes to Jesus today. Anybody? That's awesome. Keep those hands up because I want to put a I said yes card in your hand. That's the best decision you'll ever make right there, man. Awesome. That's the best decision you'll ever make right there in the back. Keep those hands up. Got a couple kids. Keep your hand up right there in the back. Man, just let, them, let us put that I said yes card in your hand. I'm telling you, Jesus loves you. The power of the Holy Spirit is here. The power of Jesus is here. And he's here to resurrect dead things in our life and empower us. The wind of God is here to empower us. Now, real quickly, I want us to just put our hands over our heart because we got people that are saying yes to Jesus. And that's the first and most important thing. But hold on, I'm not done. We're going to pray real quickly. Everybody in the building, if you're watching on HCU Live, you say, I want to give my life to Christ today. Hey, man, today's your day. Just pray this with me. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me right where I am. According to Romans 10, 9, I believe in my heart. 
I confess with my mouth that God raised Christ from the dead and I'm saved and I'm never going back. In Jesus' name, amen. Somebody give the Lord a clap and a shout. Isn't that awesome? That's so cool, man. Look at that. Seven people trying to say yes to Jesus. Had, even had some little children. God bless you guys. I'm so proud of y'all. I'm so proud of you. You know, that's the most important yes you'll ever say in your whole life. That's more important than you saying yes to like what's playing sports or having a hobby. That's the best thing ever. Saying yes to Jesus. That's so cool. I'm so proud of you. Some of you adults too. That's the coolest thing ever. Just a relationship with God. Okay, here's the last thing I'm going to say. If you want the Holy Spirit to work in your life, the wind of the Holy Spirit to blow in your life, maybe the gifts of the Holy Spirit, you're seeking after all that God has for you. Here's how we're going to end our service today. Our team's going to come and sing. I got some prayer team members that are going to be at this altar, and we're going to open it up. And if you need a refreshing, if you need things removed, if you want to come spend some time with the Lord, I want you to know that now is the time. There's not another day. Don't wait till tomorrow. Don't say, well, next Sunday I'll do it. This Sunday. No, let me say, today is the day. Today is the day. And I want you to just real quickly just jump up on your feet like you got some energy. Everybody in the building, everybody in the building, jump up on your feet. And, uh, and let's thank God for seven people real fast that gave their life to Christ. That's so cool, man. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to open, I'm just going to open up this altar and I'm going to tell you that I love you so much. And I'm going to tell you, stay connected to the house of God all through the summer. Bring somebody back next week. I'm going to start the lifeguarded uh, sermon series. If you're watching online, share this video. It might save somebody's life. Literally, literally might save somebody's life. If you're watching this on HCU live, I love you so much. Next week, we'll start lifeguarded. But this week, the wind of God is about to blow in this room. And if you're hungry for more of God and you need it in your life, I'm going to open up this altar after I speak this blessing. And I'm going to tell you that if you're hungry for more of God, it's here and it's available. I asked our first service, I mean, how many of you want the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? Come on now. Anybody? Anybody? I need the power of the Holy Spirit in my life. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to lift up this song. I'm going to speak the blessing of God on you. And I'm going to tell you that if you're hungry for more, God is available to you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lift his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus' name. Come on now, Hope City. Let's lift our hands up toward heaven and let's begin to worship God. And if you're hungry for more, come on. Come on and let's worship. Holy Spirit, oh God, say, oh God.